And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Lessonsaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Lessonsaurus was a sauropod with a long neck and long tail. It walked on four legs, but its legs were more bent than other sauropods. It lived in the Triassic in what is now Argentina in the Los Colorados Formation in La Rioja province, and it's estimated to be about 30 feet or 9 meters long and weighed up to 10 tons. Oh, it's a little guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Although kind of heavy for that short length. Actually, it's big for the Triassic. Oh, it was Triassic. Okay, yeah. That is not that small. Yeah. (laughs) That explains, too, why its, its legs were more bent than other sauropods, because... The true sauropods later had to, had more of an upright stance, whereas like, I guess, Lessomsaurus, also Ludumahati, and Lufungosaurus, all of that more, I don't know, sauropodomorph, less, slightly less upright stance look to them. Yes, but, well, what's really interesting about Lessomsaurus is because it was large for its time, but its legs were more bent, that shows that it grew in a different way from these other later sauropods, Diplodocus, Brontosaurus, Giraffe, Titan, that kind of stuff. And what's interesting is that those sauropods, the later ones, grew really quickly, and it was thought that their body structure helped, like having these column-like legs to help hold their weight. Mm -hmm. But Lessonsaurus, on the other hand, their bones grew in these quick, short bursts. So totally different, but still managed to be very large, especially for its time. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of Ladumahati with the same sort of slightly more sprawled position of the limbs, but still very heavy and big. I think Ladumahati was slightly larger because it was about 12 tons, but it was also later. I think it was right after the Triassic-Jurassic boundary. Yeah. So Lessomsaurus also had tall neural spines. The type and only species is Lessomsaurus sauropoides, and it was described by Jose Bonaparte in 1999. The genus name, you might recognize it, is in honor of Don Lessum, and the name means, the genus name means Lessum's lizard. And Dino Don Lessum is a pop science writer, founder of the Dinosaur Society and the Jurassic Foundation, and CEO of Dino Don Inc., which makes animatronic dinosaurs and other creatures. So you might have seen his name out there. Bonaparte first described this as an unnamed advanced prosauropod in 1986 and then later named it Lessomsaurus in 1999. And when he named and described Lessomsaurus, he described the eight presacral neural arches, the tall neural spines, and said that there were other fossils probably associated with it. So that means the holotype is only these eight presacral neural arches. Then in 2006, Diego Pohl and Jaime Powell described more Lessomsaurus fossils, including parts of the vertebral column, the pectoral girdle, forelimb, pelvis, and hind limb. These fossils were from multiple, probably three individuals. So that means they had some duplicate bones. No, okay, this definitely came from more than one individual. And they were all found in an assemblage. And this assemblage was probably Lessomsaurus, because all of the duplicate bones looked alike, and all the fossils in the assemblage were distinct from other sauropodomorphs found in the area, like Riohosaurus and Coloradosaurus. So unfortunately, they couldn't determine the relative length of the forelimb and hindlimb elements because of the diversity in sizes and also disarticulation. Oh, uh, so they couldn't tell which forelimb went, went with which hindlimb? Yeah, it was pretty difficult. They just knew there are at least three individuals, or probably three individuals. But they found a lot of similarities with Antetonitris, which is a sauropod from the early Jurassic and what is now South Africa. Because of the similarities between Lessomsaurus and Antetonitris, there may have been a close relationship between tetrapods in what is now South Africa and South America in the late Triassic, but there needs to be more analysis. The researchers also found derived characters between Lessomsaurus that were shared with U sauropods, the, the later sauropods, including having proportionally short and high dorsal centra, the back vertebrae, the pubic plate being more than 40% of the total length of the pubis, and a relatively long first metatarsal, or metatarsal one, belongs to the first digit on the foot. Interesting. So that must be why it's considered a sauropod and not a sauropodomorph. Yeah, and it could be why it's so interesting to look at how it grew. Yeah. 
yeah, a little more relevant because maybe it directly evolved or at least was closer to the same group that evolved into the later giants. In 2018, Cecilia Alpadetti and others discovered Ingentia and more Lessimsaurus fossils. And before this discovery, Ingentia was a new dinosaur in, as of 2018, scientists thought that sauropods got so large during the Jurassic that it was linked to eusauropod modifications, like having those column-like legs. Yeah, and then Ledumahati, too, was also in the late 20-teens that threw <laughs> that whole uh, hypothesis sort of up in the air. Mm-hmm. So according to the 2018 paper, this shows that dinosaurs started getting bigger more than 30 million years before the first known eusauropods. So Lessimsaurus is part of the clade Lessimsauridae, and that also includes Ante to Nitrous and Ledumahati. Oh, there it is. Yep. So you're right. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Lessimsaurus include the sauropodomorph Riohosaurus, the massospondylid Coloradosaurus, and the theropod Zupesaurus. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.